Hi everyone, I'm Mike and this is the Sunday Art Show. Uh, this week we're out in the fresh air and I'm going to be doing a painting of a horse in the Devon landscape. So you can see, obviously see the horse right there. And if you've been watching some of my midweek videos, the Animal Alphabet Challenge, then you'll know that I've been doing a lot of sketching using a Sharpie marker pen and an A4 pad of mixed media paper. And that's how I'm starting the painting for this week. So you can see I'm just starting with some very loose line work and some very loose shading to kind of capture the pose and the form and the anatomy of the horse that you can see grazing in the field there. And having treated the animal very simply, I'm just picking out the main features of the landscape as well. So in Devon here in the southwest of England, we have a lot of rolling green, uh, sorry, a lot of rolling hills, a lot of green fields, which are lined with hedges. Uh, there's the sketch that I did. And I, I like the kind of scratchy quality that the, the Sharpie marker can provide sometimes. But having got the line work uh, in place, I've, uh, I've kind of taped the piece of paper onto, onto a larger pad, and that's a little field easel that it's bolted into. I'm using it in a slightly unconventional way, um, just kind of holding it against my waist. And I'm using my interactive acrylics to block in the sky. So you can see I've got the easel there kind of propped against my waist. It's not ideal, to be honest with you, if you paint for a long time, it gets a bit tiring holding the easel in that way. But it does allow you to move around quite easily, so that, that's the advantage. So having put in the sky and kind of let the sky fade a little as we go towards the horizon, I'm just popping in some of the trees you see on that distant hill there. And I'm using that, doing that with my flat brush. And with the same flat brush, I'm putting in one of the kind of pale orangey yellow fields that you can just about see in the top of the screen. So to mix up that colour, I use some of the cadmium yellow deep which is a, a colour I've been using quite a lot of recently, and some uh, titanium white, and a, probably a little bit of a green used from the trees as well. So really quite a nice, you can hear the traffic going by, I'm quite close to, uh, it's, it's a fairly minor road, but um, still quite a lot of traffic. Uh, but that's one of the cool things about living in this part of the country, is you can be driving along, and just off the edge of the road, yeah, th there's a, a picture waiting to be painted. So you can see the colours of the fields kind of varies. We've got the pale yellows, we've got the lush greens. It's the middle of summer, so things are a little dried out, even though we haven't had the, the best summer uh, this year. But having blocked in the land, I've now come into that tree you can see in the top right-hand corner of the screen. And just with a very loose treatment, I'm blocking back in. So by dapping the, the paintbrush on the paper, I can create a range of, of interesting marks and keeping going with that kind of loose technique, I'm doing a similar treatment to the big tree that you can now see in the top right of your of the screen. And the cast shadow on the ground there, it's not actually the same colour as the foliage, but as a first step, I thought I'd just, just blend that in. So once in a while I kind of go back to the car and, and grab an extra tube of paint or, or a brush, and having blocked in the landscape, I'm now doing the same thing with the horse. Now the horse is kind of a, basically a white horse with some brown patches, but I'm just putting in this kind of yellow ochre mix, just to give me a nice uh, mid-tone to work from. That's going to allow me to go lighter or darker as I see fit. But the main thing I want to do here is just kind of get the sketch covered. And you can see I'm adding some highlights now, adding some uh, a lighter version of that colour. And I'm using the, the wet in wet properties that the interactive acrylics allow. There's the horse I'm, I'm actually painting. Um, so what I've done is when I've blocked in that colour, I've, I've sprayed the paint with water to allow me to just blend um, the colours a little bit as I add them. You can see it's really beneficial as I just put that little bit of texture in on the tail there. Now the interactive acrylics were designed specifically for this purpose, working outdoors in fairly warm temperatures because they don't dry out in the same way normal acrylics do. And even if they have, you can spray them with water or you can spray your palette with water to reactivate 
dried paint on the palette. Even. So it's it's really useful stuff. See, so the horse has actually moved away a little bit there. He's off in the distance in the field there, and more or less the centre of screen, to the left of the big tree. But having put a few shadows in on the trees, I just wanted to add some of the pinky, earthy tones that we've got in the, the nearer fields, because certainly at this time of the year, obviously you've got green grass in the field, but there are areas which are just pale yellows, they're pinks, there are earthy reds, lots of different colours in the summer. But for the foreground, I'm kind of scumbling in and rolling in with a round brush now, a warmer green. And as I pop a hedgerow into the distance, we can kind of take a moment to see that I've covered the whole page and got kind of a, brought everything up together at the same, at the same stage. And I'm just rolling some light highlights onto this tree here. I want to keep the treatment of the trees very, very loose. But one of the things that's concerning me slightly with this painting at the moment is that the landscape on the whole is it's working okay. Uh, but the horse, the, the loose sketch, which I liked, I've kind of lost some of the looseness of that. And I've got a little bit, you know, perhaps a few too many colours going on there. Um, but we'll, we'll deal with that in a second. So next up, though, I need to add some deeper shadows and some branches and stuff to that main tree. So I've started out with the, the trunk. I've kind of deepened the shadow there with kind of a greenish reddish brown and now I'm moving up to the, the branches in amongst the foliage so a good tip here is to not draw a complete branch because typically you'll see little parts of, a, of the same branch peeking out through gaps in the leaves you can also vary the kind of mark making you apply so you can see that the upper branches I'm using the brush the end of the brush kind of slicing along like a knife but for the lower thicker branches I use a side swipe uh, brush stroke. So it adds a little bit more texture, a little bit more interest to the brush stroke you put down. And I've, I've jumped ahead a little bit in time, but you can probably see I've added a few subtle highlights to those branches as well. I'm now adding some warmer colours to the, the brown patch on the horse. And you can also see I've popped in on the right of the painting uh, a few little fence posts. Now, the actual scene consists of a multitude of of fences, fence posts with just wire in between them, but I've just added one to help create a sense of perspective. And I, I don't really want my painting cluttered with lots of fences. So, as I mentioned before, the horse, I feel I've lost a little bit of the sense of form and the colours have become a bit muddled. So I'm just putting it propped up against the fence there and standing back at a distance to think what to do next. So while I'm pondering that, I thought I would show you some of the other sketches I did of this same horse. So this is uh, one where I'm just standing at the edge of the field with the same pad of paper and the same sharp, sharpie, but here I'm doing a much bigger version of the horse and this is a side view. So there's the horse there, very kindly posing quite still, grazing away at this point. Um, and, you know, when you work a little bit bigger like this or you just do simple sketches in black and white, it's a really good way to help improve paintings that you find you've got yourself a bit of a tangle with or you've struggled with because it helps you get your mind back into thinking about form and tone uh, without having to worry about colour or any of that stuff. So I find these sketches, even if they're quick, really useful. So there's the one that was the beginning of the painting. There's another really quick one. But they've all got like a little bit of energy to them, I feel. Here's a back view done very quickly before the horse moved. That one's not proportioned all that well but it's quite lively. That was just a failure. I'll come back and use that page of the pad another time. There's, there's one of the horse walking. Another one of the horse grazing away there. And then that's the sketch that I just showed you I was working on. So back to our painting. So having kind of come to that realisation that I need to work on tone and, and kind of just improve, you know, get things simpler and get away from the colour, I start by adding a wash of kind of a greyish blue over the top of the dry paint that I put down on the horse before. And what that's going to do is when it dries back completely, some of the colour work I've done already, that will show through partially. So 
I can now add highlights onto that wash and some of that work I've done already will still show through but by doing these simple washes of dark and light what I'm hoping is that that will pull the animal together as a coherent whole and standing at a distance from my painting that's working better than it had but I still want to kind of bring the horse forward in the picture to kind of push the landscape back into the distance. So with that in mind, I'm kind of scumbling some deeper green very loosely over the lighter paint that I put down earlier. And again, stepping back from the painting is so important. If it, if it looks good and reads well from a distance away, then generally speaking, we can be confident we're heading in the right direction. What I'm just doing here is using a damp paper towel to lift off some of that and add a bit of texture. And then I still feel the horse needs a little bit more definition. So I've taken a burnt umber watercolour marker pen and then I'll come in with this light blue that I'm using now. And I'm just picking out little edges and little features, little tufts of hair, little bits of joint that are showing uh, on, the, on the animal. Being careful not to outline the entire animal being careful not to overdo things. I just want to add a little bit more definition here and then, a little bit more liveliness. So you can see that's worked reasonably well. You can see the flies are quite happy with the painting, so I guess that's a good sign. Um, but I enjoy doing this en plein air uh, landscape with a horse. There's the finished pick. As always, you can check out my website. I'll put the link in the description below if you want to um, get a closer look at the painting. But Hope you enjoyed watching this video. As always, please feel free to ask me questions in the comments below. Please remember to subscribe and I look forward to seeing you next Sunday for the next episode of The Sunday Art Show. Thanks again for watching.